Welcome to Washington In Focus. I'm Brett Davis. Joining me today is the Center Square's Eastern Washington reporter, Tim Schumann. Uh, this week, you authored a piece headlined, Woodward touts Blake Fix victories. Council may need to fix Blake Fix. There's a lot of fixes in that headline. So some background on this. So on Tuesday, the legislature did in one day what it couldn't do in 105 days of the regular session and passed a bill that makes uh, intentional possession or public use of small amounts of illegal drugs a gross misdemeanor punishable by up to six months in jail for the first two offenses and up to a year after that. So they finally got around to a permanent fix to the state Supreme Court's February 2021 decision in State versus Blake that essentially decriminalized drug possession. Uh, a temporary legislative fix was set to expire on July 1. So Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodard has said, uh, had something to say about the legislature passing a new drug possession bill. Tell us about it, Tim. So two weeks prior to this passage in special session, the mayor of Spokane, Nadine Woodward, put together a cohort of 28 mayors, including herself, who signed a letter to the state legislature, essentially asking for something substantively similar to what the legislature passed in special session. Ultimately, she was, you know, excited that there are actually recourse and tools that her city administration could use against what she called in her statement a drug crisis. The problem with that is that a week prior to the special session when the state legislature passed this Blake fix, the Spokane City Council passed their own Blake fix, which will now have to be amended to be in line with the state law. So they're happy, but maybe a little bit annoyed that they have to they have to fix their own law? A little bit, yes. And Ultimately, uh, when I reached out to the city council prior to writing this article, almost every single member responded with something along the lines of, we haven't had time yet to determine what the changes are going to be or what, what changes we're going to need to make to our local ordinance to come in line with the state law. But everyone agreed that things are going to have to be revisited. Right. Is there any kind of timeline on when that's going to happen? I assume that'll be the first order of business next week. No definite timeline, but I also assume that uh, it will be one of the first things dealt with on Monday's agenda. I haven't seen it added to the official agenda yet. Yet, but these things change fast in instances like this. No, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head or not, but there were any were there any major differences between uh, the law Spokane passed and the uh, legislation the legislature passed on Tuesday? Any any big differences, or is it all pretty much the same? I think if I remember correctly, the major difference had to do with public use. That sounds about right from what I know. And I've got, I've, I've got this issue on the brain or a lot of stories about it this week, too. So so it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. It looks like the legislature, at least for the most part, avoided uh, a situation where, you know, local jurisdictions would have to pass their own laws and would end up with sort of a, maybe a confusing patchwork of laws. That is another one of the wins that Mayor Woodward was touting in her press release is that the state legislation left much of the control up to local entities. Her take on that was that it will allow for greater flexibility in sentencing and treatment options at every level of the process from prosecutors to law enforcement, which diversion programs they're choosing, etc. It'll be interesting to see how this law actually pans out now that they've they finally passed it. So here's hoping it works and they struck the right balance between law enforcement and treatment. That is the hope. And uh, hopefully it will, as Mayor Woodward, uh, you know, was saying, give them the tools to deal with uh, this quote unquote drug crisis. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> so listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Tim Schumann, this is Brett Davis. Please subscribe and thanks for listening.